Okay, so here is the video on how to finish sanding your project. This is one of the most important steps because it really takes your project uh, to the next level and really making it look good and feel good. So here's what you're going to need when you start. Sanding block, 100 grit, 150 grit, and 220. If you have files, files would also be very helpful. Um, and here is the goal. The goal is, remember, always to sand with the grain when you're on the face or edge of a board. You don't need to do it on the end of a board. And your goal is to get rid of all the marks, to fill in any gaps, and to fill in any holes to round over any rough edges, to soften them, and to make it really, really smooth. So you're going to notice that some of you might have some gaps like this in your miters. And I'm going to teach you guys a little trick to fill in those gaps. Or if for some reason you have extra holes that you don't want, you can also fill those in. So what you're going to need for that is you're going to need some glue. I'm going to grab my glue in one sec. So we're going to start with this. And here's what you're going to do. Is we have this little gap here. And this is going to be really important if you're staining. Because if you're staining, you want this gap to be filled with the same color putty as what your wood is here. So when you stain it, these two are the same color. So you could get what's, what's called wood filler, and we could fill that in. But we don't know if that wood filler is going to be the same color as our plywood here. If you were going to paint it, you could use what's called bondo or caulking or wood filler as well. But because we're staining it and we don't have any matching wood filler, we're going to create our own. And you can do this on any gap that you might have. So if you have gaps along here, you can do it on any of your miters or where you joined these two pieces together, you can do there, do it there as well. So here's how you're going to do it. There's two ways you can do it. The first one is you take just a little bit of glue and this is going to be the adhesive. For your wood putty. So I fill this in and then wipe off all the extra glue. The glue should only be in that gap. So I have another gap here, so I'm going to wipe it in there. So now what you're going to do is you're going to get your sanding block with 100 grit. And all you're going to do is sand directly over that glue. And all the sawdust that is created from your material is going to then adhere or stick to the glue and create a wood putty once that glue dries. I'm going to sand over this. And now all that wood putty, or all that glue, is filled with sawdust. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to sand right here on the corner because I want to get rid of that glue. Sanding with the grain, making sure I get rid of all the glue that's on the face of this board. Because remember, stain will not penetrate glue, so it's going to create a contrast. So then we have this side of the face of the miter. And now that miter no longer has a gap. Okay, so that's a great way to create your own wood putty and to fill those in. 
Now let's say you have a gap right in here and it's a little bit harder to sand. Another way you can do it is if you just put a pile of glue and then you create from your piece some sawdust And then you take that sawdust and you mix it with the glue and you create a putty. Then you can take that putty and fill in any gaps that you might want. So let's put some right there. And then you'll notice we have a, the contrast there. So then what I need to do, sand with the grain, and I'm going to sand that down. This one is gonna be, I think, a little bit easier just to have hand sand. Now I got rid of all that glue. Now you can, because plywood has these layers, you can sand right through this top layer, which is called a veneer, into that second layer if you're not careful. So you don't want to sand plywood too much or you'll go through this layer and it's going to be a different color on your block. So now that we have our holes filled, the next thing you want to do is we want to just soften these rough, sharp edges here and all the edges around your speaker, and then the edges around where your holder is, and sand these inside. So I just like to get a 100 grit, and I just like to round these edges over. To make them even. So it's like when we did the round over in the chamfer, you're trying to make them even and if for some reason you made a crooked cut here this is the chance by rounding things over you can make things look straight and appear straight and you also want to sand in here okay so I'm gonna do this with a hundred grit this is what's gonna take the longest is doing this with a hundred grit And then I would come here, round that over, and again you can put this in your sanding block on the outside here, I think it's probably a little bit easier, get on the inside here, soften that edge, on the edge of the board. And what you're looking for when a hunter grit is to make it all the same uh, smoothness, rounding the edges and getting all the marks off. Now once you've done all this with a hunter grit, then you're going to come with 150. And again, you might start here. And this is going to get rid of all the marks, the sanding marks. That were left by the 100. Sand this.
what you're going to notice, the more time you sand, the better your project will turn out. Sand the face here. When you put that stain on, if you took the time to really sand this well, it's going to make a really big difference. Not only in the feel, but in the look. So as you're sanding, you're you're putting your hands over this to make sure it all feels the same. So this stuff felt a little sharp here, so I'm still just kind of softening that edge. Sanding with the grain, really important on this face part. And you're doing all around, softening this edge, softening this edge. These edges here, sanding in here. So you're gonna spend your time doing that. And then finally, this is when really makes a difference is when you start getting to the 220. And this 220, if you sanded just one section and then put your hand over that versus this part, you will notice a really big difference, especially when you start staining this. If we stain this piece versus this piece, you'll notice a big difference. So you're gonna do that all around this frame, then on the back side, softening all these edges, and then you're gonna to go to staining that project. So today you're really just working on getting this prepped and ready to finish. And that's the last step before you do it.